All right, so while we're here and getting to know one another, we've got 15 people in the room, which is great, super size um, for a great conversation. So Susan, do you wanna help lead? Do you wanna start leading this discussion and kind of talk about um, the question in itself while we wait for Brenda? Absolutely. Um, will you read the question again for the group? You bet, absolutely. So the question is, assuming casting for recovery can effectively reach and educate this community about its program, how can they get them to enroll and attend? Right. So um, one of the things that I have found um, with our retreats is that different communities have different ways they prefer to engage. Um, and some of that is uh, we, we need a better understanding of how to engage. And I know that there are nuances to, to a lot of this. What I have found sometimes is that um, women of color want to come with somebody else to a retreat. So they get selected and they may ask, well, can my friend come and can we room together? Well, we've always had a policy of, we have random roommate assignments we're not going to pick two people who are friends to come together, um, but we're also a small grassroots organization that can pivot quickly if it's in the best interest of the women we serve, which is how we try to have try to guide all of our decisions. And if that's a way to engage more women of color, then great, we're happy to do that. So it's things like that. And that's just the tip of the iceberg and just one example, but I am certain that there are many other things that we need to know um, that would help us with that and would be an easier lift and would reduce barriers for women and make them feel more comfortable about not just applying, but getting in the car and showing up, right? So I think that one of the questions, um, since we're we're not doing that education piece question here, they're working on that in the in the other room, right? Is so now we're assuming that they know about the program. What do you feel like, like maybe to the group? What do we feel like are some of the barriers to the actual engagement? Okay, I know about it. I have the flyer in my hand, or I'm reading about it online, or you know whatever that process is. What what are the barriers? that we need to overcome to get somebody to actually hit enroll or apply, do we think? Jordan. My initial thought, like especially with breast cancer patients is they probably, they might be in the age where they have kids. And so I know the, the retreat is free, but what if, they, if they're a single parent, what if they need a babysitter or childcare, like is that an extra cost? Um, that might be a barrier, maybe they don't have family or friends nearby that can help out with stuff like that. So I don't know if that's a barrier. And then also transportation to get there. Um, do they have a car? Um, so I know at Wonders and Worries, those are some of the barriers is transportation in itself. Um, they might not have a vehicle to drive themselves over or a way to get there. Um, and then just if they've got other kids at home, you know, just balancing that, especially if it's a single parent. Um. At an organization where I was before, we were on a similar track of trying to attract uh, Black and Latino students. And what we found, um, and it's been also my personal experience, is not wanting to be the only person of color there, right? So you, you have a Latino mom that is going to give you their child. They don't want them to be their only kid there because you start to wonder, will they be treated fairly? Um, are they going to feel like they fit in, right? So. Um, it's almost kind of like you want to have that same affinity group when you get there, right? Where you know that there's at least going to be one commonality. So if making that, you know, um, if allowing them to room or bring a friend or is, is going to get one person there, then you're starting to create that kind of like momentum of, okay, we do, they do serve people of color. I'm not going to be the only person there. I think that that is, that could be a potential barrier. Brenda, I see that you're back. Can we hear you? I'm back. I'm Yay! back. I had to go all the way out. <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. We're, we're glad uh, you're back. It sounded interesting. Uh, where, are, where are you now? Yeah. So we were talking about um, the challenge of 
assuming that they have information, right? Assuming they've read the program, they understand what's happening. How do we get them to actually enroll? Um, and so my question was, what are some of the barriers to that engagement, that hitting apply? And so our, our two initial answers from Jordan and Julia were one childcare, like what if they don't have access to childcare or that big family circle? And then um, Julia um, was talking about, um, you know, having those kids feel like they're not the only one, right? Dropping them off and saying, yeah, is my kid gonna be treated fairly? Um, and then transportation. So I'll let you take it from here. Wonderful, those sound, both of those sound like uh, good recommendations for solutions. Was there anybody else that had, um, that had anything to add to that? I would love to go. Um, as well. Um, so I'm actually an angler instructor for Texas Parks and Wildlife. Um, and I'll, I mainly, my volunteer hours mainly um, help children. And surprisingly and, and wonderfully, there's all colors, I have learned. However, I have learned um, that the children of color's parents don't even want to um, be in the environment. So it's waiting in the car. <laughs> I'll wait for you in the car. Um, and to be quite honest, it's about being outside. It's hot and being in the outdoors type of setting. So even with my own friends of color, I have tried to get friends of color to go camping with me to go fishing with me, you know, I'm an angler instructor, let me show you how. And it's like, I have to go outside, no. So I think the education is out there, great. That's step one. Step two, I feel like is more almost in a marketing sense where we can kind of almost say, there will be shade. We promise to provide bug spray. Um, we will, if it's hot, we will have fans. We will try to make you as comfortable as possible. Um, we will, you know, I, in an area that has been checked and looked for snakes. Um, so, you know, all those types of, of things to where you can kind of make them feel more comfortable. Um, Brittany, is she on here? I cannot get that kid to come fishing with me. I cannot get her to come camping with me. And I have, you know, I, I have been like, I will provide everything. I All you have to do is come. And her thing is, will there be a fan? Will there be, you know, all that type of stuff. So on a kind of a marketing sense, just making them be like, oh, we are going to make you as comfortable as possible. And I will do everything that I can to make sure that you do not see a snake, um, those types of things. Um, and I, I try, try to reiterate that when I have those parents that want to just come hand me their kid and then want to sit in the car. And it's kind of like, no, 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 no. I, why don't you stay and at least watch? Maybe next week the kid wants to come out fishing and you can come bring them. Um, and maybe you picked up a few things and, and, and you can um, do it together, that type of thing. That's, Hi, I'm uh, Tasha, when I did this, Latasha, the other day, she said, you know, I just, I'm trying to imagine that being a problem because in the South, black women love to fish. So I, I hear what you're saying, but if you don't have that love of fishing, Tasha, what was your suggestion? Yeah, I was gonna go along that, that line as well. But one of the things women of color, we have to make sure that it benefits us. What is the benefit of me participating? There are a lot of programs in regards to breast cancer that you know when we go into the office that we get introduced to. And yeah, I may like fishing, but <clears throat> what is it with me going somewhere else fishing as opposed to fishing in the pond right down the street for me? So what will be the benefit of me actually participating? Um, 
that is really a big concern of women of color. And I'm in the South, I'm in Mississippi, um, <clears throat> along with Ms. Uh, Kathy. And we do have women of color that do enjoy fishing. Um, I myself, I don't fish, but my father does. And I just haven't had, we, we live around two and a half hours away, but I haven't had a chance to go fishing with them. So having an opportunity, being invited to do it and understanding in regards to the, having a correlation between um, breast cancer recovery and fishing, um, they have to understand, we have to understand the benefits. Thank you, Tasha. Tasha, what she's saying is uh, really relevant. Is there any other any other persons that have suggestions to add? I, would, um, I used to work for, I was an assistant director at an outdoor summer camp here in Central Texas, and we tried to pilot um, a summer camp program with local charter schools um, to target youth development or youth really in the black, um, for black and Latino students. And so um, it was a very grassroots um, effort. We did run into some similar problems, especially in our first year of recruitment. We were able to recruit about 25 students for a summer of 10 weeks, but um, what we really found was as much as we were pouring into the summer program itself, um, after our first summer, we realized we had to do so much more um, in the recruitment process um, pre, you know, pre event. And so asking some of those tough questions as will I be the only one, um, you know, person of color there um, are huge to Julia's point earlier. Um, so the second year that we ran that program, we were able to amplify and recruit 50 campers um, of color, but we also had in-person visits to every door. We had a school forum with their principal. Um, it was very grassroots and in-person, and so we poured as much into pre-event um, during that summer into the event itself. And so um, with COVID in mind, I would just be curious to see what that looks like digitally for y'all, whether it be community Facebook groups, um, pre-event that everyone would be able to join, address some of these questions, have someone um, of color as an example um, to address these just head on before they even get to their treat themselves. Um, and then just different touch points during the year, whether it be virtual coffee sessions. Um, and I don't wanna put more on your volunteers, but I would just be curious to see what that capacity looks like pre-event. Just to touch a little bit on what Michael said, another thing that was uh, helpful for us as we were recruiting um, that specific demographic and it aligned with being able to show what the value add was for the students, not that we just wanted to recruit them, but was that we had a community champion, right, from that community that we were trying to target that had been through the program and could talk first experience about what it was like and the benefits of it. So it wasn't just, you know, somebody recruiting for the sake of recruiting, but it was somebody that had gone through the program, benefited from it, uh, and was a champion talking about it. And you know, we, we hired them full time and they served as a recruiter and we saw a, a great level of success there. And that is that is so important. I'm glad you brought that up because um, it, you've got to pretty much have someone that's gone through it that can say, this will work. The other thing is a lot of black women don't swim. A lot of minority women don't swim. So to be out in the water and have a fear of the water, not to mention the bugs and the heat, but to have fear of the water. I, I would wonder if that's something that we could possibly overcome because we have talked about uh, what vehicles you can use to get to the women. I don't know if you all have used uh, sororities. I don't know how much you get churches involved in terms of getting people on board, but these are trusted people in our community. If your friends, if your uh, sorority says, board. So how are we going to effectively reach and get people educated about what we're trying to do? That's going to be people who will instill trust because that's really what, you know, gotta have the trust in order to step out there in that water. Jordan, were you, was there something you had to add? I was kind of gonna say something about trust. Um, like even hearing from the organization, from someone they trust. So we've worked with community health workers um, and they're kind of representatives of certain communities. And 
just like if they know our staff, if they know our team, if we've had face-to-face -face conversations and there's a trusting relationship that we have with social workers or leaders at these churches, um, when they go to ask for resources and they're recommended a resource, um, it's gonna mean a lot more coming from them than it would like their doctor or, you know, cause I know that there, I've heard several stories of just mistrust in the medical system that different diagnoses will look different on different races, different skin colors, different. And sometimes there's a lot of misunderstanding um, or they don't feel heard because a certain diagnosis is gonna look different on their body than a white person's body. And so sometimes things aren't caught as early and so if like a doctor's recommending something, they might, I don't know. So I think they need to, people in the community need to, like whoever this population is going to go to for resources, there needs to be trust built within those professionals in that community, those leaders, um, so that, you know, if they're referred to that organization, they have a more trusting relationship because they um, were introduced to it by someone that they know and trust. And wow. I think when... Oh, sorry. And, and and that's it. Latasha, I'm sorry. No, I was agreeing. Tasha. Um, yes, I was agreeing uh, with women of color. If you partner with the sororities in that area, with all sororities, they have a health component as part of their target. So, um, which means they have to do outreach to the community. And one of the things with is with volunteerism, but also with getting information out. And because of sororities, um, the African American sororities are very trusted organizations. Um, it's not just on college campuses, but we actually have um, graduate chapters to you know to really assist the furthering the uh, our, our missions that can really uh, be the game changer. So. Um, Ms. Kathy was absolutely right, Jordan was absolutely right, that partnerships with the uh, influential people in that area and uh, predominantly the uh, African-American sororities is what's going to really help bring the message across and keep people engaged. I, I, had a, I, I wanted yeah, to follow up on that fear of water um, piece uh, because that's so interesting. Um, I was wondering if maybe there's an opportunity, Jordan kind of thinking about this community health worker piece, like partnering with the why, like kind of playing off of what Michael was suggesting, right? These pre-events, if you were, maybe there could be an opportunity to partner with the local YMCA to take this community and do a pre-event at a Y where you're in the water, right? So there's some instruction or some, like pre-event to kind of get used to that or to see what it is in two feet of water that's not a river in Montana. You know, I don't know, just a just a thought, another way to bring a trusted community. Um, I don't know, I look, I look to the Y as a, a trusted community place in my neighborhood. And now uh, I can say that there's yeah, not a lot of Y in the African American community. I didn't know that. Yeah. There are not. Are not. Uh, there are there are wellness centers and uh, hospitals that have exercises in the water, in the pools that older uh, Black women participate with, but there are not a lot of wise. And yeah. if they're there, uh, I, I I just don't know a lot of people who use the why. It, it okay. may be available, but um, so are there any other suggestions now? We got to bring them to the, we got to bring people to the table. And what was interesting to learn is that this is a part of the healing process. It's not just getting the numbers, but this is something that's going to benefit the person. Uh, who do we have? Cerny? Cerny? Yeah, this is Srini. Um, I mean, I was uh, in, in the spirit of there are no bad ideas. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, um, you know, how tied are, are is the organization to the fly fishing concept, right? Because from what I'm hearing, um, and, and personally, I'm I've never done fly fishing, and especially if I put myself in the shoes of a a patient or a caregiver who's already feeling vulnerable. 
I, I don't know if I could convince them right through all the digital media that we have to attend this event, right, or, or enroll in this event. Um, I would I would maybe consider maybe like what Michael suggested, like virtual coffee sessions to get them first to to participate and and meet people, maybe bowling. Right. Um, you know, it's a two hour commitment. Uh, it's not a, a day long or an overnight stay. And to what previous people have suggested, I mean, especially in the underserved community, getting away for one night or two nights, you know, maybe kind of a, 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 a you know, a, a bit of a showstopper as well. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if we are truly thinking out of the box, uh, maybe trying to set up some, um, you know, parallel tracks of activities, right? you know, something as simple as virtual coffee sessions, like what Michael suggested, or, or like bowling, or, you know, other things that the Black women community kind of want to do, right? Uh, maybe it's college football games, right? Uh, attend, you know, stay overnight at the local football uh, and cheer the the, the 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 college kids. Something a little bit more that that's easy for for them to take on in in the kind of vulnerable space that they're already in. So that is such a fantastic view because my thought was, and I think I said it to Suzanne, were. Black people at the table when you made the decision about fly fishing, but I, I, I understand it's an ongoing uh, a program, but I agree, I agree with you. Maybe something that leads up to what is going to be the biggest event of their life, stepping into two feet of water, not knowing how to swim with bugs and heat. I mean, those are those are just very real deterrents. But we're gonna we're gonna I I believe it can happen. It can work. And someone said, when someone goes through this program, they're the best spokespersons. And uh, so I I think your your success lies there. Uh, the person who brings the message is how I receive it. It depends on who's bringing it to me. So is there any other suggestions? We want to at least be able to go back to the group and say uh, we have some, maybe some alternate suggestions in terms of uh, getting uh, minority breast cancer survivors to the table. I Someone's had a thought about um, what you were saying about breaking things up. So like building up to that, you know, two day retreat, whether it's initially meeting for coffee and then maybe a half a day sort of in a nature somewhere and then you slowly build it up. But what other people are saying and, and Michael is saying about the pre-event information, I think with any kind of trip that's outside, that's new or maybe outside someone's comfort zone is just giving them um, every information, every piece of information they could possibly think of, whether it is, you know, a map or pictures and like, oh, let me see the water, maybe like a video, like this is where you're staying, this is where you'll be eating, this is the running water. Because um, when I go somewhere, I'm on Google Maps and looking like, okay, walking here and, and trying to find out as much information as possible to prepare myself and to plan ahead. So whether you can share, like not just experiences and stories, but actual footage of the locations, um, that probably might help someone kind of take that next step of like, oh, this I'm becoming more familiar and I'm learning and then maybe I'll talk to people and I can see and almost visualize myself being there. Yeah. This, Great. This, this idea is, is along the line of using another group or leveraging another group. There is an organization called the Black Women's Health Imperative that is based in Washington, DC, and their whole focus is in this sector and they have existing networks across the country. So, um, you know, it, it would be comparatively easy to make an introduction to that organization and share with them what you're trying to do. And they may be willing and able to put their network to work to help uh, as a reference. 
And I, um, I have I wondered, uh, or I was curious if you guys had um, explored the actual experience of the women of color that you have had there to kind of understand what that was um, and maybe potentially identify some gaps that would make, that would, if you addressed them would attract other women to come, if that makes uh, sense. So what was their experience from the recruitment process all the way through being there and maybe just kind of get their feedback as to how you could improve the experience for this particular um, demographic? What, what brought them there? Yeah. I think that, um, I think that what I hear a lot, and I have to tell you that, so we have, uh, 46 retreats around the country. Some are so in places like, and they, and they always go to the retreat that it's closest to where they live so that we can continue to build local community and support all of that. Um, so somebody here in central Texas might go to a uh, church camp and retreat conference center. Somebody in Wyoming might go to more of a lodge um, women in Long Island go to the Hilton Garden Inn. Um, it can vary dramatically the, ex the experience and where women stay. Uh, the, the idea of a video with uh, showing what it's going to look like, it, it's so simple, and, but that would alleviate a lot of fears because um, we have women who sometimes show up and they're like, oh, I thought I needed to bring my own sheets. I thought it was truly a camp. And uh, no, there's hotel style lodging. You'll have your own bathroom. There will be a bathroom where we're fishing. I mean, things that um, all, all of those fears could have been quelled. But to, an but to answer your question, the majority of women, since we know that a lot of women didn't, haven't been to a support group for their breast cancer, they, they come for a number of reasons, uh, the women of color to try something totally new um, after going through their breast cancer treatment, here's something totally new. Maybe it's a bucket list item. That's kind of across the board. People say that. I saw it. I've always wanted to try it. It looks beautiful. Or um, they love to fish. Some people uh, have never fished and they come for the camaraderie with other women. Um, some, some come because they need time away. They just need time to stop and work on themselves. Um, it really runs the gamut, but with, but with minorities, I think a lot of times it's trying something new is what I hear. Um, and we really try to make it clear that it's about fishing, but it's not about fishing. Um, and that your fishing guide will do absolutely everything for you. Um, you don't have to touch a fish if you don't want to. Um, and you will not be in a river runs through it style water. Um, we try to answer a lot of those questions, but we could definitely be answering more questions and providing information before those questions um, to alleviate any fears or concerns. Um, we do have a lot of women who don't know how to swim. And we, we had to uh, definitely, uh, we asked that question on all of our forms now, are you comfortable around water? Do you know how to swim? Um, because we want them to have a great experience. And so we can put them in a scenario fishing where maybe they're on the bank, if that would be the most comfortable for them or whatever it might be. Uh, Susan, do we also wanna mention that um, uh, our, each retreat has a participant coordinator that has individual calls with the women to discuss maybe some of yeah. those. Candy, Candy is uh, on our national staff. Um, we do have a, a woman on every team that reaches out and um, communicates multiple times with each woman leading up to the retreat. But I think a lot of times, I think we, I think we could do some other things to, uh, we, you know, people don't read. Uh, I mean, they do, but they get inundated all day long with so much information and we send out a lot of information and a video would say a whole lot 
without ever having to uh, write that information down. So that's super helpful. Susan, I'll just share one thing. Um, uh, be like, I I'm a golfer, right? And I've been able to convince, I want to say less than 10% of my friends who are non-golfers to come out to the course, right? <laughs> because it's, it's just people don't think of golf as a sport and it's just something that's, you know, enjoyable. So to me, being an, uh, a non-fly fisher, I kind of equate it. And, and maybe this speaks to how non-persuasive I am. I'm not sure with my friends. Um, but I just wanted to just bring that up. I, I mean, just stepping back again, um, I think the intent of the program, at least from what I understood from your keynote, is it's all about sharing information and building that community. Um, and I, I think it's it's maybe for, for this particular set of people, the underserved Black women and, and, and other folks that you're targeting, maybe it's you know just a thought to try and experiment with another activity you know, and maybe it's a virtual coffee, right? Something as simple as that and, and seeing what kind of comes out of it may be uh, a good idea, but uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you. Thank you. Certainly, I, I agree with the lead in and I think that's something, Susan, that you say that you already do, uh, but uh, I, I would certainly, you're, you're going to have to bring them to the water <laughs> for the fish, so I agree if we can, uh, and, and then some people are never gonna wanna do it. They're, they're just never. So how do, we, how do we as a group, what do you think we can do to effectively educate and get the word out that this is a good thing to do? And, and I don't want us to not, I, I don't want us to overlook the, the, the venues that are sure in the churches, uh, certainly the, the sororities and, and those kinds of things. But what, what else do you think we can do to get them to uh, enroll and attend? In the other room, they're, they're talking about probably how to get them even interested in it, but how do we get them to enroll and uh, to be a part of this? And as, as uh, the doctor just said, we've got to get them interested first. So uh, I'm sure it'll work together. Is there any other suggestions um, that we can take back to the main group? I, I had a quick question is, and you might have mentioned this, so I apologize if you did. Is it specifically for like low income um, or is it just women in general? Because sometimes when at least this happened to us, we were recruiting and we kept using the word underserved. Well, not all you know, people of color are underserved. So when you're marketing and you're seeing underserved and you say, okay, well, I'm not low income because that's sometimes how it's equated. So um, you know, if, if it on your website and in places like that, those are some of the words that are being used, then people might not think that they're eligible for it. So that was just like something that I wanted to point out. We, um... No, we, we don't specifically um, serve underserved populations. No, everybody. And the, the way I read it, it was specific for region. You were looking for those states that were underrepresented. I, I didn't read anything that was specific to underserved until we were talking about the area in New York in terms of their underserved communities. But it's a good point to make because some people would feel they don't fall in that category. Any other suggestions? I, I wonder about the idea uh, I wonder about the idea of that community champion. Um, maybe there's a and, and kind of listening to Tasha talk about you know what's the benefit for me. So maybe if you go, um, and then you bring a friend, you go again and bring a friend, you get to go, like there's some added benefit to you, right? Like, I, I don't know what that is, but you get a fancier room <laughs> or, or a massage after or extra bug spray, I don't know. But, you know, like to kind of build on that, on that, I'm gonna bring you with me. Now I, you are my trusted person. Um, so kind of continuing that kind of, that community champion, but almost 
rewarding to bring back a friend to go again. I think this is Rooney with the BCRC and I've been, sorry, I've been listening in and out. So if, if I'm repeating what someone said, please um, excuse me for that. But I know for us that casting for recovery is something our clients really, really enjoy. And on especially our online forum and our support groups, it is something that when it is posted, especially somewhere in Texas, it is out there um, in our groups and everyone's talking about it. So I think um, just continuing to reach out with community partners and local nonprofits to really talk about that. And I know we are, we started, we have um, support groups and we have online forums for a very diverse um, group. So I think that is something we're just to continue to, and you all already do that, but I think um, with the focus of more um, trying to get diverse diversity in your programs, I think that would be really helpful because it takes, it goes back to what everyone has touched on already from what I've heard about if they already know someone that has done it and someone that's like them and that possibly they may be able to even go with that person if they're all applying at the same time. So just whatever you can do to connect with the community and, um, but it is, it's knowing, it's, it's always about community and being comfortable, even though you're stepping out of your comfort zone. And with nonprofits and local community, everyone is just really, we want to do what's best for the community. So I think definitely, definitely try to leverage that as well. That, that's a good idea. And what I see, Rooney, is that this, if we can get this to a point of being a sisterhood, uh, that we're coming together, um, not just to fish, but that this is a sisterhood. Whereas we will read all the material that you're sending us, but we need to have some social interaction separate from casting the real. Michael, did you did you have something to add? A little bit, yeah. I don't want to. I want to tread lightly, but just um, I'd be curious to dip in, you know, and learn more about your corporate sponsors. Um, I know Bass Pro Shops has, you know, probably over 150 locations. Some of them, I went fishing there as a kid just to, you know, catch a fish, um, just kind of their local stores. But I'd be curious to see what that could look like um, as a community event, and maybe having, you know, some of your corporate Yeti ambassadors as well as a corporate sponsor bring a representative to help out. Um, to alleviate the burden of volunteerism um, and then maybe structuring it like that. Um, but just a thought, just kind of on the community side of it pre-event. Wonderful, thank you. That was great. This is a great group. I, I, I think I got the best, the best group. Uh, is there anything else that anyone wants to add uh, I know on my bio, there was a lot of conversation about tobacco and tobacco control. And what we were having was a problem with tobacco control because people weren't considering their homes to be a, a smoke-free area. So we had to bring a program that would convince them that can't do this in mama's house, you mean that uh, they would closely uh, identify with. So um, this this was the the necessity of not mama's kitchen. And by the same token, if we can create this sister group, uh, and I love the way the sororities do it. So uh, I don't want to I don't want to lose sight of that. Nadia, are we ignoring you, dear? Nadia, are you on the screen? I think you're- Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I had a question. Um, has volunteer outreach included physical therapy and occupational therapy associations? No. Um, as an oh. occupational therapist, um, you know, we work one-on-one -on -one with patients and um, I have to develop like home programs and part of the home programs is range of motion and strengthening. And of course, fishing, you definitely get range of motion, you get strengthening, you get coordination, retraining and all of that. So it's just, um, you know, a, 
a fun way to exercise would be engaging in some sort of therapeutic activity like fly fishing is just an idea that was coming to mind as I was listening to everybody speak. Wonderful. Well, I'm also curious, uh, post well, we your have, event, uh, um, so, sorry, just one other thought. Um, post your event, um, you know, what kind of sort of social media postings are the members who are joining? Um, you know, I, I just heard Art talk about the, I think the Black Women's Health Group, you know, are, 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 do you guys distribute some, you know, kind of cool t-shirts that say I went fly fishing and then maybe post on, you know, some of those Twitter handles and other places to just kind of just get the word out, right? Oh, you are so good to I, not be a minority woman, but that's that's, <laughs> a great, that's a great idea, isn't it? You know, I t-shirts are quite the thing with messaging uh, these days, so that's that's even a thought. Can I can Go I ask, on, can I ask a question of the group? In looking at um, in our retreats, um, and since they're nature based. We often incorporate mindfulness in nature and um, nature walks and other things because we know that not everybody is going to continue with fly fishing, but we know that a lot of people really like the healing benefits that nature brings, being in nature, being near water, um, the sound of water, birds, all of that. I'm wondering what is what would be attractive as a secondary, if it wasn't fly fishing, what are some things that would be appealing that could be incorporated into our program? You've got uh, I don't know what's going to happen in 14 seconds, but my clock is saying we're about, that was a good question. We, well, I wanted to touch on that early. We have five seconds left. You all, what are the there we go. We're gone. Thank you all.